Okay, dear students, now let's continue. It says find the principal argument of uh, the following complex numbers. The first one is 3i over minus 1 minus i. So before we directly go to the calculation part, let me define what a principal argument is. The principal argument of a complex number is the angle, basically, obtained between, you see, the positive x-axis and the complex number once the complex number is, you see, drawn on a complex plane. So if you are measuring, you see, in terms of clockwise direction, it will be a negative angle. And if you are measuring from the positive x-axis in anti clockwise direction or in counter clockwise direction, you are going to have a positive angle. And the other thing that you need to know is principal argument always lies within the interval of minus pi up to pi. Minus pi exclusive, but pi is inclusive. And uh, the other thing that you need to underline is the principal argument of a complex number is written by capital A arc of that complex number. So based on this, we can now uh, see how we can find the principal argument of this uh, ratio of uh, two complex numbers. So in order to find the principal argument of ratio of two complex numbers, we have to consider these properties. Remember, we have studied this in our classroom. We said that capital uh, A argument of Z1 over Z2 is equivalent to capital A argument of Z1 minus capital A argument of Z2 plus 2 in the pi. I'm saying here capital A because there is also small a argument of a complex number. But whenever uh, I say capital A argument of a certain complex number, I mean the, prin the principal argument, okay? For a given complex number, we do have only one capital A argument of that complex number, or we do have only one principal argument. But small a arc of a complex number can be a lot because it's a matter of taking coterminal angles of the principal argument. So remember now, the capital A argument of Z1 over Z2 is argument of Z1 minus argument of Z2 plus 2 in the pi. Here, 2 in the pi is introduced because, as I said earlier, the argument of a complex number must lie within the interval of minus pi up to pi. But as you are taking the difference of these two, you see the resulting uh, angle may, may lie outside of the interval the interval from minus pi up to pi. So we have to create a mechanism of having this uh, ar principal argument within the interval of minus pi to pi. And to do that, coterminal angle must be taken if it is out of that interval. And to have the coterminal angle of the given uh, angle, we need, need to introduce uh, this one to n pi. You are free to take any integer in place of n. Okay? And uh, the other thing that you need to know is if this result brings a certain a certain angle lying between minus pi to pi, you can exclude this one. I'll show you this using examples, okay? Anyway, now let's proceed to this. The argument of is 3i over minus 1 minus i. So the argument of the ratio of the two, so consider z1 as 3i and z2 as minus 1 minus i. So this is going to be the argument of 3i minus the argument of the denominator minus 1 minus i plus 2 in the pi. And as you know, this 3i is, you see, a nothing but it is an arrow lying on the y-axis because the real part is 0, the imaginary part is 3, so totally this 3i is lying on the uh, y, what, axis, on the y-axis, having magnitude 3 units because the real part is 0, the imaginary part is existing alone. Hence, you see, the angle measured from the positive x-axis up to, you see, student, up to the y-axis is pi over 2. So pi over 2 is capital A or the principal argument of, you see, 3i, capital A arc or the principal argument of this 3i. So you do have pi over 2 for this value. And when you come to this, look, the real part is negative 1. So you need to come to the negative part. The majority part is again negative 1. Again, you have to come to, you see, the lower part of the x-axis. So where are you? You are in the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, if you observe students, points do have x and y components negative, negative values, okay? So because of this, you see, this is an angle lying in the third quadrant. Whenever your angle is lying in the third as well as in the fourth quadrant, you need to have a negative uh, angle of a principal argument because you are you are forced to move in clockwise direction from the x-axis. So look, as you are taking the ratio of minus 1 and minus 1 here because the y component is minus 1 and the real part is minus 1, you're having 1. Minus 1 divided by minus 1 is 1. So tan inverse of 1. You see? Tan inverse of 1 is pi over 4 as you know, 45 degree. 
right so you have to look for it you see the supplementary 45 degree the supplement of 45 degrees 135 degree and we know that the hundred the radian measure for 135 degrees 3 pi over 4 since you are moving in clockwise direction the radian for minus 1 minus i is going to be minus 3 pi over 4 yes so it will be minus 3 pi over 4 so for this you have pi over 2 and for this you do have minus 3 pi over 4 but in between you are having minus so the presence of these two minus turns these two plus and then you do have 5 pi over 4 plus 2 in the pi my dear, dear students look this 5 pi over 4 is totally out of the interval of what minus pi or up to pi so we have to look for the coterminal one so this concept must be introduced this term must be introduced to in the pi so for what value of n shall you see this angle 5 pi over 4 lie between minus uh, pi up to pi if i use set of uh, numbers from set of natural numbers you see positive numbers for instance this for at the beginning is what greater than pi so it, it is out of the interval minus pi to pi and if i add extra positive this will be totally out of what the interval from minus pi to pi so i have to consider negative what negative uh, integer so the first negative integer is a minus one so let's substitute negative one in place of n when I put minus 1 here, it will be minus 2 pi. 5 pi over 4 minus 2 pi is going to come, which actually is minus 8 pi plus 5 pi, minus 3 pi over 4. And nice, minus 3 pi over 4 is lying between minus pi up to pi. So we can consider that as the principal arguments. Look, to find the principal arguments that has to, uh, which must lie between the interval minus pi to pi, yet you take minus 1. If you take minus 1 here, this turns to be, look, 5 pi over 4 plus minus 2 pi. Just simply put uh, minus 1 in place of what? N, nothing else. Minus 2 pi. And as you are adding this, minus 3 pi over 4 comes. And minus 3 pi over 4 is lying within the interval minus pi 2 pi. So we can consider this as a principal argument for this complex number. You see? Because it is an angle lying between minus pi to pi. We don't have extra, what, principal argument for a given, for this given complex number. For every complex number, we do have one and only one principal argument, capital A argument. But you can have many small a argument of a given, what, comp uh, given um, complex number. It's a matter of taking the coterminal angles of all these. If you are looking for the coterminal of this, you can have a lot. All these coterminal angles, you see, outside of this interval from minus pi to pi, can also be considered as arguments. But in this case, they are not principal arguments. In mathematics, we present these, you see, non-principal arguments of a, a coterminal angle for the principal argument uh, by small a arc, small a arc of the complex number. Okay, that's all about the first one. And coming to B, it says uh, Z is equal to radical 3 minus I to the power of 6. So you, we, you are asked to find the principal argument of this again. So what shall we do for this? First, we have to look for the Euler form for this one. Remember, the Euler form for, you see, R E the power of, the R E I theta, the power of N, must be what? Used in order to determine the principal argument for this one. And the principal argument for a given complex number, once it is given in terms of this, is n times theta, as we studied in, uh, discussed in our class. Just multiple n with theta, you see? You do have n times theta. n times theta. So, the principal argument is going to be n times theta. But if this n times theta lies outside of the interval minus pi to pi, you have to introduce this one to n pi must be added. And you have to select appropriate integer in order to, you see, make the resulting angle to lie within the interval minus pi to pi. But if this n times theta lies within this interval, no need of considering this one. You can skip it. Okay? You can ignore even. Maybe take zero because you are free to take n to be zero, zero is an integer. So the only thing you see to consider this is the case where you see uh, you have this value being outside of the interval minus pi to pi. So let's look for the Euler form for this one. So clearly R is nothing but it is the modulus of radical 3 minus i. And this is calculated by using what students? Radical 3 squared and you see uh, 1 squared. Basically that would be radical 5. No problem. Don't worry about R because you see our interest is to find the angle. So you don't worry about that. But you can find that way. 
What about theta? And theta is, this is the angle obtained by considering the radical 3 along the positive x part and negative 1 along the negative, you see, y part. So where are you? You are in the fourth quadrant. The x component is positive, radical 3, the y component is negative 1. So you are in the fourth quadrant. So now in the fourth quadrant, as I said earlier, you need to have a negative angle. So, look, tan inverse of negative 1 divided by radical 3 must be taken. Negative 1 over radical 3. Basically, since you are saying that it is in the fourth quadrant, you can ignore negative. Now, 1 over radical 3 can be taken. Tan inverse of 1 over radical 3, as you know, is radical 3 over 3, which basically is 30 degree. And its equivalent radian measure is pi over 6. 30 divided by 180, 1 over 6, and add pi, it will be pi over 6. Since you are measuring in clockwise direction, negative must be considered. Negative must be considered. So theta is negative pi over 6. We knew what n is. It is already given. It is here. It is 6. So n is 6. So we can now determine what n times theta is. Look, n times theta plus 2 n pi. So what will happen to this then? This is your n value, 6. And this is your theta value. Look, by 6, we can cancel 6 by 6 here. Then negative pi is going to come. Had this been lying totally within the interval minus pi to pi, you see, no need of considering about this one. But look, minus pi is excluded here. Minus pi is excluded here. Minus pi is not considered as your principal argument, okay? So we have to create a means of having, you see, having an angle lying within this interval. And for that, we have to introduce to n pi. Now, look, students, what sort of n value shall I take so that the sum can be, or the sum can lie within the interval minus pi to pi? This is a negative one, so I can have, you see, n value to be positive one. So as you are taking n to be one, look, what will happen is, you see, this one, minus 6 times minus pi over 6 plus 2 times 1 pi. 2 pi minus pi is going to come. And we know that 2 pi minus pi makes what? Pi. You see, student, now, you obtain pi. Is pi within the given interval? Yes. So we can say that the principal argument, you see, the principal argument for radical 3 minus i to the power of 6 is what? Pi. Basically, these two values can also be obtained by first simplifying the given expressions in, uh, and trying to look for, you see, these uh, arguments then after. Okay, You can also be in that approach. For instance, for the first one, 3i over minus 1 minus i, just try to take the conjugate of the denominator and try to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. You will obtain a certain x plus y value. Finding the principal argument of the resulting one is the same as this one, okay? Applying these properties.